Hey guys, um, title this message, Obedience is Better Than Sacrifice. I'm going to kind of go through a few scriptures, I'm going to keep it short, um, but it's they're all tied together, guys, all these messages that the Lord's given me, but so this morning, my wife said, and I'm going to get to the obedience piece in a second, but this is part of it. My wife said to me, she said she watched this message. How God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word are being censored. Taken out. Why? Because sin is in and those are out. Okay, so she watched it and then she got to Isaiah 1, which is one of the scriptures I want you guys to read and study. It's really good. Because it goes along with that, plus it goes along with the message about the storm, that the dreams I've been having about the storms coming, and <clears throat> I haven't dated it. I don't like to do that. I don't want to meet the sensationalism and all that other stuff. But my wife said <clears throat> that I looked, you know, that she understood it because I seemed calm. I'm like, okay, well, that's great because that's a miracle by itself from the Lord. Because, yes, I feel the peace that passes all understanding. I'm in my prayer a lot. Nothing to do with me. That's where I want to be. You should be too. But I'm not, don't really feel calm. And I've got more than a multitude of reasons why not to be. I mean, just one, I'm a watchman. And I'm seeing this world just spinning out of control, viciously, virally, just, and it's like, wait a minute, guys. That's a lot of my messages are the warnings. And it's like, God, you want me to say it like that? So, recently, Okay, I'm going to get to the obedience piece. So, so that's that's one scripture, Isaiah 20, Isaiah 1. Then read Isaiah 1, 27. Because I was asking the Lord about that, why, what's going on? And he said everything's gotten twisted by that Leviathan spirit. That it's, it's twisted in the world, it's twisted in the church, it's twisted in people's families, it's twisted in people getting divorced, it's twisted in relationships. It's time that, that goes along with the message that I'm saying about who's your source, guys. It should be God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. Part of the mess, the one about the sin is sin is in, but those are out. Because it's gotten twisted. If you're an LGBT fan, you're in. If you're not, you're out. If you're an abortion fan, you're in. If you're not, you're out cool crowd. I'm not cool, guys. I'm hot. I'm on fire for the Lord. Burning inside of me. He's telling me and warning his people. There's a storm coming. It's part of the obedience. Okay, and then I'm going to go to the some things that I learned in the obedience and why I probably have, have a valid reason to not be calm for that one alone. But it's a piece that passes all understanding. So a little raw. I mean, it's kind of constantly keep it before the Lord in prayer and supplication. But I learned a long time ago, maybe four years ago, three years ago, sitting in my prayer chair, which is right behind me, just sitting there praying. Guys, no one's around. Lord, to give me some random city. First one was Italy, Texas. I'm not going to name the other ones. And... It's like, I'm going, going with this with the obedience, but so the second one, so we went, so, but the second one was um, down in Texas, and he told me to do a couple specific things, but one of them was, he said, go to the library, find the clerk, and ask him for a book on witchcraft. Like, Man, God, you're nuts. Didn't wait to me drug as a kid. I, you know, long argument and prayer. He didn't even tell my wife because I was a little embarrassed. We went, we did go, and we went, and 
everything worked the way the Lord said at the beginning of the day. People he told us to pray for, told me to pray for, and everything was just divine and set up. I'm like, okay, God. So we went, got there, did what he asked me to do. And it happened to be a lady, and she just looked at us. She said, I said, ma'am, I said, you're going to think this is kind of sound kind of strange coming from someone like us, but do you have any books on witchcraft? She just, you know, she said, no, that doesn't sound strange. She started looking, and my wife's jaw just dropped because I hadn't told her. Then I saw her praying in tongue. I was like, yeah, God. She's in. And, but the Lord was specific. He said, I'm giving you direction, but your wife's going to be my mouthpiece. And he said, I don't care about, tell, tell them that I don't care about the book. Just take you to the aisle where the books are kept. So that's what I did. I said, ma'am, I said, I don't really care if you find a book or don't. I mean, I don't even remember how I said it, but can you just take us to the aisle? Well, she did. When we got there, she just started bawling. Her story was she was born again, she had one child that was saved, a teenager and one that wasn't, but she was studying her genealogy. She was a single mom. Granddad was a warlock. Great granddad was grandmothers, great grandmothers, uncles, nieces, all steeped in witchcraft. And she just started bawling. She's worried about a generational curse. And then the Holy Ghost came all over my wife, just bubbled up through her. It's already in her. Ministered to her for a long time, guys. 30 minutes, a long time. 45 minutes. So after that, I was like, okay, God. So the last one was, well, it's a little, I'm going to make this short, I promise. The last one was a little podunk town in Pennsylvania, 2,000 miles away. And the Lord told us to drive. Man, you know, that wasn't easy, guys. But I'd already learned the obedience years before. We just went. Everything happened just exactly like the Lord told me. I didn't have very many specifics, just one. Go to this little town, find the newspaper, and talk to a reporter. That's all I had. And it was a little. I had to Google the town. It did exist. The town of 4,000 people. So the newspaper wasn't very big, guys. It wasn't like I was trying for the sensationalism of being on CNN or something. I just went and everything happened the way there was there's just a lot to that so I'll just get that's one point I'm saying is I learned obedience but where I'm going with this is the obedience is better than sacrifice is the Lord had me going down the road of Cain and Abel and the sacrifice we all want the billion dollar bank account so we can write the big check, walk down the red carpet, have it rolled out, fly in our private jet, pump, front row seat, big dog in the outfit. That's not acceptable. Look at my messages, guys. He wants the dirtiest, sinful, stinkiest, ugliest, hurtful. He wants your hatred, your anger, you're cheating on your wife, taxes, lies, deceit, bitterness. That's the offering he wants, guys. And I asked the Lord, I said the same thing you guys are probably thinking right now. I was like, Lord, what are you talking about? Why do you want something that's not good? None of that's good. So I can set my people free. And give them eternal life robe of righteousness covered under the blood of the lamb we kind of got it all backwards guys yeah I, I'm going to quit saying money's blessed honestly it's just a tool guys it's no different than this coffee which is you know great for me because it helps been, I've been waking up one, two, three, four in the morning so this has kind of been my mainstay But he wants, did dealt with me about this. I do, I, there's more that I want to say, but, um, well, two things, or three things. But it's just, he wants to deal with us 
in the dirtiest, darkest places, the rooms, the secret rooms where we won't even go. Some of them we know are there, some of them we don't. We buried them so far down in us and put 18,000 locks on and we lost the keys and they're buried in a concrete bunker in our heart. <clears throat> That's what he wants. The rooms in your heart and the places where you won't even go. You may not have told your spouse, your parents, your kids, you don't even tell yourself. Some of them are so shameful, hurtful. And the enemy wants us to not bring that to God. And God's like, bring it. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. Because he wants to set us free. So that's the sacrifice he wants. That's what's going to be acceptable to the Lord, not your stuff. And with this, guys, okay, this is another piece of obedience. There's more to it, but... Well, actually, no, I'll go a little bit longer. I, only, I promise I'll only go 15 minutes. It's on there. It was put out in, in November of 2016, a vision that I had of the election, after the election, and Jesus being at the center of this country. And I've told church people this. I've told pastors. I've told men and women of God. Some some take it and accept it. Others just give me this weird look like I'm from another planet. I am. Peculiar people, a royal priesthood. In the world, but not of the world. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be better than either then, because that's a whole other message. That's, that's just a whole other surreal message. But... I said that to say this, okay, look it up. Get a copy if you want. You can email me too at Youngstrom. At, no, um, you can email me at Jesus is Alive in America at gmail.com and I'll send it to you. You can you know, blog, you can, you know, there's ways to contact us, I'm sure. One of them. <clears throat> About six months ago, he told me to send it to the president, vice president, several of his cabinet members, a couple of prominent people in the church world, and Anderson Cooper at CNN. I said, oh, like Anderson Cooper, that's like kind of like, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to politicize it or anything, but I'm feeling like, man, that's like sending it to the enemy's camp, kind of. You know, the guy's okay. I mean, I've watched him some, but not anymore, but it's like, And the Lord said, I said, why, Lord? He said, because he's one of mine. So I'm just going to throw that out there. But, okay, guys. But that same letter, and I sent him a book, too, which I'm having to revise. It's, this is partly why I shouldn't be calm, because I had this book out called Jesus, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And how were his glory and were his story, were his hands, feet, eyes, ears. It's just, it's mostly scripture. Well, this is part of the why I shouldn't be calm. <clears throat> March, put it out. Passed out 100 copies, 200 copies. I sent the, 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 those same people a book. So, but it got pulled off the shelf because they said that I used too many, that I, that I needed a permission from the author. I was mad at first, pressed the issue, I prayed about it, the Lord suppressed the issue. It was because I had, I didn't know this, and this is part of why I shouldn't be calm. But... I'm revising it now, but I had used a, a Bible tool and I just, you know, because of expediency, kind of, I just copied and pasted a lot of scriptures. Well, one of them was out of the new, a lot of them were out of the new King James Version. Well, apparently it's copyrighted. It sounds like, for at least from this, this site. I was like, man, okay, God. Now I'm having to redo it. So that's partly why I shouldn't be calm, but that's minor, yes. But back to what I was saying about the obedience piece of it, that same letter, the 
the same vision. It's out there. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Recently took my took took somebody to McDonald's and the Lord highlighted this one of the one of the servers and I gave him this this letter. I'm not gonna say a name or anything or what McDonald's or anything like that, but I highlighted it and I gave her the same letter that I sent to the President of the United States, guys, and the Vice President. And some real prominent people I got a whole list of people to send it to. Gave it to a clerk at McDonald's. Next week I went back to Sam McDonald's and she came up to me and said, man, you know, her, she'd been, her kids had just got kicked out of this church and they, some people invited her to church and they were just, she was really hurt and she, they needed a place to go and she didn't have a car. And I was like, okay. But this is where the Lord was having me and what this, there's this helps ministry that we're starting up. And this is probably why I shouldn't be calm because it's like, okay, God, you want me to do what? On a shoestring budget, 800 bucks, guys, honestly. So it's like, okay, God, you're telling me to do these things, but you're stripping these things away. Well, one of them was the finances, of course. Loss of some income from some job, a job and some other things, but the Lord's already rearranged some things, so we're okay. But I just didn't have a lot of income to do this. So that was one. But also, too, it was about a year ago. I put it on there. It's under broken and contrite spirit, but long story, but... I'm going to keep this under 20 minutes, I promise. But it goes with the obedience. And why I shouldn't probably be calm, but I'm just being obedient. So I am calm because of the obedience. Because when you're obedient to the Lord and your sacrifice is before Him, the peace that pass all understanding will flow. You might not be. Circumstances might not be. But so... I've had some health issues, guys. I had some, some brain strokes and at the end of the day the doctor report was like man monitor to severe brain loss and one of them that it wiped out was the area where my balance was i couldn't even walk guys i haven't fell in five months but there was a time where i couldn't even walk guys i'd be walking on that but a bunch of times dozens of times probably and i get no warning and i mean and sometimes it hurt i'd hit the ground full throttle i was like god y'all been to walmart cutting across the parking lot the people are you, you can just see it in their face they're impatient they're on their phone they're you're about to run you over what if I fall in the middle of the, trying to get across this busy intersection here somebody runs me you know it's like now I'm gonna get hurt I get killed it wasn't fear but it was like man god this isn't gonna work I was already healed me of that but not according to the doctors because that part of my brain's gone it's like doesn't exist Okay, well, but it also took parts of my cognitive and memory thinking, and it's like, okay, God, and you want me to do all this this stuff, plus write some more books, a bunch of books, and it's like, man, God, instead of seemingly opening doors, but, it, but the thing is, that's why I'm calm, I guess. Well, not I guess, but he is opening doors. Those don't seem like that. That's like, man, you stripped this away. I just finances, the impossibility in the health realm. I mean, guys, I'll be times when it's like I'll be driving along and kind of forget where I'm at almost. Literally. Why where am I going? Sometimes I'll go to make a phone call and I'll have a business card right in front of me, you know. Uh, the area code's two one four and I'll dial nine seven two or I'll dial the, I, sometimes it take me three or four attempts to make the phone call a phone call guys so all these things are like man I shouldn't be calm because of that but I am because through it all I learned to trust in Jesus so and then even all this you know it's like 
late at night, I'm early in the morning, he's waking me up, one to three to five, I mean, it's like, and then messages and scriptures, it's like, man, God, I'm a little overloaded, God, but I'm going to do the obedience, because I know it's better than sacrifice. I'm just a vessel, guys, and I'm going to do what he tells me to do, when he tells me to do it, how he tells me to do it, and let the outcome be his, because... I know it's going to work. He's already done it, you know. On the outside, just even in the finance, financial realm, it's been like, hey, I should be come, you should have been toast, kind of, in a lot of areas, but it's like, but not so, according to God. He's already done something that's not done, and it's not, you know, I'm not saying it's not enough, but, you know, it, it's, it's, I mean, it's not like I, you know, got millions in the bank, and I'm, Big safety net, I don't. But I got something better than that. The name is Jesus. The blood of the Lamb. So anyhow, I just, you know, I'm in the obedience mode, guys, and I'm going to do what he tells me to do. I just way, way more. So, and the last, you know, the last thing, well, I need to end this because it's getting too long. So anyhow, um, Obedience is better than sacrifice, guys. And he wants those dirty, ugly, sinful, hurtful, shameful, guilty, painful, uglier the better for God, honestly. That was the whole point of Jesus. So he can give you the robe of righteousness. You gotta wear it. You gotta keep it clean. You gotta live that holy standard, of course, absolutely. Because he even said that in the scripture, the woman that was caught in adultery, just, you know, don't sin anymore. He wants to keep us clean. He wants, you know, so, but you want to, that's the beauty of it. That's probably the calmness. That's one of my, you know, because I know who's in charge. Took me a while to get here, guys. I'm not perfect at 40 years. So anyhow, we love you guys. Um, sorry to be so long. I really am trying to shorten these, but it almost seems impossible. So anyhow, we love you guys. Um, email us, Jesus is alive in America at gmail.com. Um, you can look us up that way. You can email us at Jesus is alive in America at gmail.com. Or you can just look us up at Jesus is Alive in America. Or you can blog with us at JesusAliveAmerica.com. So anyhow, we love you guys. Um, contact us or, you know, let's just talk, blog, whatever. Love you guys. Bye.